Well, I lost a bid, and I won a bid. And uh, I have a hatchet coming to me. And this hatchet is, uh, what they call the Black Beauty. It's got the black and silver handle, segmented handle. Anyway, I've done nothing. Uh, Charlie and I spent the day, you know, in town. And, oh, and we got good news. Uh, uh, she is stable, is what they said. The word they used is she is stable. So nothing has grown further than last time they did this to her. So that's good news. And uh, I want to talk about unions. I have nothing else to talk about. And I've been thinking about this. Actually, Charlie and I, early this morning, we were talking about unions. And, and I told her how much I hated unions. And this is before I even met Charlie. She was very young. And she worked at AT AT&T. And uh, they wanted her to join the union. And she said, I'm not joining the union. What is the union going to do for me? They're going to take money out of my check. Uh, And then they have this quote, unquote, charity that everybody in the union had to donate money to. And we all know where this charity went. It didn't go to the charity. So uh, she didn't join the union, and everybody who was union was pissed. So they started doing dirty crap, you know, moving her from shift to shift, changing her from station to station to do different jobs. And uh, I said, you're not going to believe this. Let me tell you, not my wife, I'm telling you, the subscribers, uh, this is my personal opinion. And if you were union, you were happy with the union, fine. I freaking hate unions. To me, unions uh, encourage sloth, apathy, mediocrity. And uh, I would never, ever be a part of a union. And uh, many years ago, I'm talking about early 80s, I had a full-time job. And I ran the East Coast. And I got paid by the hour. And I had good equipment. Uh, I got paid a really good salary. I made, actually, damn good money back then. Non-union. I, got, I was an over-the-road driver, but they paid me by the hour. So whenever I was sleeping, I was getting paid. And uh, it was absolutely comparable to union wages. So you can only work X amount of hours, right? So I had a part-time job. And uh, it was Union. And the thing was, now I'm going to tell you who it was. It was Finest, uh, First National Foods, but the grocery store was called Finest. I don't even know if they still exist or not. Anyway, I got a part-time job with them. And uh, it was just about what I was making on my full-time job. And uh, it was an easy job. You pick up a loaded trailer, you drag it to the grocery store, uh, you back it into the dock, you pick up an empty, and you take it back to their uh, grocery warehouse. And I would do, you know, probably 10 or 15 hours a week on the weekend, stuff like that. And I didn't have to be union because I was part-time. All the union guys, one at a time, would come around. So, you going to join the union? Uh, no. I'm, why would I join the union? I'm part-time. Oh, come on. Everybody joins the union. You know, aren't you worried about uh, getting fired? I said, why would I worry about getting fired? I show up on time, I do what I'm supposed to do, and I go home. Why would they fire me? And uh, this just infuriated some of them. So it got harder and harder and harder for me to work there and be non-union. And rather than join the union, I quit. And I got another part-time job. It was also union. This is the one, one reason why I hated living in New England because your options for working non-union jobs were very limited. And I hated the union, even as a young man, because you could walk into any union shop and you could pick out the losers that didn't deserve a job and made everybody who showed up on time and didn't cause trouble and did what was asked of them, made all of them look bad, and they couldn't get fired. And the union protected them. And that's one of the reasons I hated unions. One of the many reasons. So I found this other job, part-time job. And uh, it was actually damn good pay. 
and I worked as many hours as I could there, and I started experiencing the same thing. I was part-time, so I didn't have to join a union. But one at a time, all the truck drivers there. Now, I even had, this is the first time I ever encountered this. They told me to slow down. I was working too hard. And I wasn't working any harder than I normally work. I wasn't killing myself, and I wasn't dragging my feet. I was giving them a good, honest day's work for a good, honest dollar. And uh, here's what it was. You had to run from East Hartford. And same thing, you picked up a loaded trailer. You drug it down to, uh, was it South Haven, North Haven? It was New Haven, but it was either South or North New Haven. I think it was South. Anyway, and uh, you pick up a loaded, you drop your trailer there, you pick up a loaded trailer, and you come back to East, Har East Hartford. And uh, then when you get back, you strip trailers, you run a forklift, you uh, pull freight off the trailers, and you set it uh on the ceiling, they would have these abbreviations for cities that the freight was going to, and you'd pull your freight off the trailer, and you'd set it in the lane of the, the city that was over it, so they would know what trailer to load it on going to that city. Easy job. <clears throat> you didn't have to be a brain surgeon. Nothing terribly heavy. Well, they got mad at me because I would pick things up that they thought two guys should carry. And I said, well, you know, who can't pick up 100 pounds? And why are you working at a place you got to lift things up if you can't pick up 100 pounds, you know? And I would, they would say things like, well, you're taking a man's job. How on earth am I taking a man's job by picking something up by myself that any healthy man should be able to pick up? And it just got worse and worse and worse. And here's the, well, they started threatening me. And they started telling me they knew where I lived. And, uh... It got pretty bad. It got pretty serious. But I didn't quit. I was making too good of money to quit. And uh, here's what they ended up doing to get rid of me. The uh, miles you would drive round trip throughout the night was you know, three to 400 miles. So I did my, my little bit, came back, and I parked the truck, and I worked the dock. And then I went home. Well, the next morning... Uh, I called to see if they needed any help. Not, that's what they called, uh, you were, uh, what do they call it, running the board or something like that. You know, if they didn't need you, they just didn't need you. But hardly ever did they not need me. So I called them, and uh, the guy in the dispatch office says, uh, we're going to have to let you go. I said, what for? He goes, uh, well, your truck blew up. You blew your engine in your truck. I said, how did I blow the engine in my truck? He said, you ran it without oil in it. I said, so you're telling me that I drove all night long, parked my truck, and after I left and came home, the motor blew up. Come on, man, do you really believe that? And uh, he said, look, man, I don't make the rules, you know. I got to do what they tell me and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, I get it. And uh, not long after that, I moved back to Louisiana and never left again. Well, I mean, besides moving to Texas, but... Uh, from that day forward, I always chose jobs that didn't service union shops. I had experienced General Motors Union, the Auto Workers Union, uh, another nightmare, uh, dock workers unions, Teamsters unions, and I freaking hated them all. And I never met, I never went to a, a union shop, a union dock, where you just simply got loaded, got your paperwork, and left. It was always something. It was a absolute chaos from, from what door to back into to where to get your paperwork to uh, how much product you were supposed to get. I mean, there was always something with unions. And I always left scratching my head. How do these companies stay in business with nothing but losers working for them? Losers who should not have a, a job, don't deserve a, a good job and benefits, and anything that most people would kill for. Good pay, benefits, security. And, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, so when I finally, when I finally bought my own truck, and I don't know, it was, what, 90? I think it was 90. And I would pick and choose loads. I would ask, uh, is this load 
at a union shop or deliver to a union shop. And most of the time they would know. And if it was yes, I would turn the load down. And if it was I don't know, I would get the phone number and I would call and I would get somebody, anybody. I would say, uh, yeah, are y'all union or not union? What do you want to know? Said, well, I'm a truck driver and uh, I'm trying to decide whether I want to take a load to you or not. And if you're a union shop, I don't haul the union shops. And, uh, you know, I would find out. And then I would either accept a load or turn the load down because that's how much I hated unions. And you know what? I made more money not going to union shops than I ever did. Union, going to union shops with your truck is a gigantic waste of time. Even trying to get to merge. Like, uh, you know, they do this thing where they make you sit seven or eight hours. Well, that's seven or eight hours of my tires not turning that I'm not earning. If the tires ain't turning, I'm not earning. And I got truck payments, I got fuel to pay for, I got uh, insurance to pay for, and, uh, you know, they. it doesn't matter to them that they're taking a dent out of your income. So anyway, that's my union story. I worked for two union shops. Uh, I didn't join a union, but uh, it was a nightmare both places. And then from then on, I, I actively... Uh, refused loads going to union shops, picking up or delivering. I uh, didn't want nothing to do with unions. And I was far, far better off for it. I met nicer people. I got my loads on the truck quicker. I got unloaded quicker. And, uh, you know, I've heard companies that, in my trucking business, I heard shops that were non-union and were, you know, flawless and everything was, uh, you know, like something on grease trails. Everything worked right. People worked right. People showed up on time and did a good job. And uh, then somehow the union would get in there and within a year or two, the shop would close up. And that's what unions do. They, they're destructive. That's what I think. And that's my personal opinion. And, uh, you know, if you think something else about unions, that's just fine. But I'll go to my grave hating unions and, and uh, feeling like that unions do nothing but encourage sloth and and uh, mediocrity and averageness and even if people are good at their job it doesn't matter because uh, your your exceptionalism at your job is just as equal as the guy that shows up late every day and does the minimum and goes home and uh, you you're no better off you don't get any more money you don't get promoted or anything like that that's not how unions work Unions take the natural way a human male would work, and they destroy it. That's what I think. Okay. Uh, tomorrow's Tuesday. Well, you're seeing this Tuesday. And uh, I've got <clears throat> a couple things to do tomorrow. I won't be in the knife shop. I won't be home. <coughs> I've got a Patriot Guard thing to go to Wednesday and Thursday, and I'll probably be back in my shop Friday. So, unless something interesting happens, we won't see you till then. Have a good Tuesday, y'all. Well, I'm a little disappointed. This is the hatchet I've been waiting on. I have a bid in on another hatchet. This is uh, made by Western. And I've been trying to buy a knife that has the same uh, pommel, trumpet. And they call it a trumpet style pommel. So, uh, it's missing one or more leather discs uh, they really shrunk up so what I'm going to do I'm going to take them all off and I'm going to replace it with some wood some nice wood I mean I got nothing to lose it's in worse shape than I thought so this is going to take an awful lot of work to get it in uh, you know reasonably new-ish condition and uh it's had some grinding up here. I don't know what the grinding is about. Same here. Oh, well, I have been trying to buy a Western 701 to match this. And uh, I found one. It's brand new. And they want 200 bucks for it. And I have been in negotiation with the person who has it. It's on eBay. And uh, they'll sell it. I mean, it's a, you know, reasonable price. But I was trying to get the price down to one twenty five, and trade for this. And uh, 
they weren't interested. So I can't spend that much money on it and expect to sell this for what I have into it. You know, like I say, I'm not looking to get rich, but I am looking to send stuff out that has been restored and reconditioned and is good for another 70 years. But it didn't work out. I'm going to keep my eyes open for a 701. In the meantime, I'm going to clean this up real nice. And I have a uh, Black Beauty hatchet coming and a Black Beauty knife that matches it. And for that, I'm going to make a sheath. See, for this and for the other, they have a sheath that is for the axe and then a built-in sheath for the knife. And that's what I'm going to make when I get the other stuff. Or maybe this, I don't know. But uh, I'm just going to keep my eyes open for a 70, 701 Western 701 that I can afford, uh, even if it needs work. As long as the handle's in good shape on the 701, I can take care of the blade. All righty. That's all for me. It's uh, late in the day. We just got back from Charlie's doctor appointment and going to make groceries. Have a good, good meal. I don't know. I think we're going to be busy tomorrow. And Wednesday and Thursday, I have Patriot Guard stuff to do. So um, we'll see you Friday.